This is called the Invisible Rattlesnakes. It was a humid afternoon in the Brooklyn brownstone backyard. I waved my hand over my leg when I first felt it. What are you doing? A little boy said to me. I just shoot away a rattlesnake. It was going to bite me, I said. There aren't any rattlesnakes, said the boy. I don't see them. Oh, they're around all right. They're invisible. And there's more than one. The little boy laughed. You're so silly. The sun was sweltering. Sweat dripped from everyone's skin. Be careful, I said. If you frighten them, they will come after you. I don't think you're telling me the truth, said the boy. Ouch, I screamed. One just got me. I didn't see anything, he said. I lifted up the leg of my jeans. Look, I said, showing him the teeth marks dripping with blood. <laughs> Uh, Philip had a very, um, community garden reading, and there were two community gardens, and Peter Kowalski came to see me read, and he, I gave him my little book that I give out when I do a reading, and I'm reading this next poem for Peter. It's called Girl Writing Now. On the L train to Canarsie, she writes lyrics on a forearm, she has no paper. A bluesy beat cadence, she pens in purple sharpie. Dreams fall out around her, a homeless guy smiles. She wears three feathers in her long dark hair. With her fur inkwell, she crafts words for Webster. She scribes her own saga. Shooting from this planet, she doesn't need a parachute. She'll loudly leap and land on her feet. Text message reads, boom. Her reply is, boom, before the boom. When she reaches her destination, she gathers her dreams and allows the homeless guy to keep the one he smiled. another brand new one. This is called Her Happy High. Two glasses of wine. She smokes a doobie. She feels good. Checks MTA bus pine wrap. Her bus is two stops away. She leaves with a slow jog in wedge sandals. Reaches her pace. In a nice stride, 25 feet away, the bus sits at the stop. The light turns red. She's running now. 75 degrees, the sun is warm on her skin. 10 feet away, the driver opens the door. She made it. Adrenaline rush. She's not a runner. The bus is air conditioning cool. It feels good. She takes a seat. She's high. <laughs> she begins to think about the word high. She thinks high is a good sounding word. High is a great word. High spirits, high hope, high expectations. And you feel good when you're high. She thinks the H sound particularly makes high a good sounding word. And she thinks that most words that begin with the letter H are good sounding words. Honey, happy, hello. She thinks I just ran the entire distance from my house to the bus stop. Now she knows in the future she can catch a bus that's two stops away if she's high and she flies. <laughs> This is another new one. Um, working on a new book. I finished my first book. It's sending it around. Yeah. And I have a new book that I'm working on, and I wanted to write it in prose, but it came out in poetry. It's called Prelude. This is the first beginning of the book. Two lonely souls lost at sea, past midnight. They're holding on to driftwood, holding on. Ocean, ocean tosses them, water rushes in. Ears, eyes, throats. They're holding on to driftwood. They wash up when sunlight burns their eyes. Awakening on sand, they discover each other. Sea battled, sun tattered, and worn. She says, hey. He thinks she's crazy. But he's lonely, says, follow me. She does. Soon they're in a dark, cool space, retreating from the torments of the sun and the sea. Thank you.